We are back on the Ford 555 project and today we are ripping apart the power steering system and trying to figure out what's leaking. If you're new to the channel, Clint from CNC Equipment drugged this thing down here for us and we have been rebuilding it. I've got all kinds of videos and a playlist in the description, new pistons, new rings. It's got a brand new gear reduction starter, brand new alternator, brand new radiator and water pump. That's courtesy of area diesel service, new battery, new battery cables and several new hydraulic hoses as we keep blowing them along the way and there will be a lot more hydraulic hoses to come but the big weakness right now is that the power steering pump leaks and we're down to just brake steer and i also don't want to burn up the power steering pump whenever i'm using it so i want to get that tackled next and that's what we're going to jump into today let's see how she starts up for us this morning it's about 55 degrees or so out right now which means the wasp should still be sleeping that's good Let's see what we got. A little of that. Uh, I've got to get some new battery connectors ordered. I am not a fan of these connectors. I don't think they do a good job. I gotta give her the old beat every time. It just, they don't hold them very secure. They make better connectors. I need to get them ordered. Now what we got? So we got her locked out there. This just sits on the cylinder and hits on the ram. And then there's a little tab that pokes up in there. That way if the line blows or something, it can't smash down. That supports it. And that gives us a bunch of access down here. Power steering pump is here. It is mechanical. Some people made a comment about this loose pulley. That is the pulley that was for the air conditioner compressor, which went here. And in fact, I have no intention of ever putting that thing back on so a fella might just go ahead and buzz that whole bracket off and give us some more room anywho what i want to do is fill this i want to fill this thing up with some power steering fluid which is on this tractor i believe should be the same as the transmission and hydraulic fluid and let's see where she comes out at all right we got some fluid in These two lines come back from the steering wheel and they run down to the cylinders themselves. So we're just going to take both those off, hard lines and all. Might as well do both of them. But that's the problem. That's why we're not getting anything to turn whenever we turn the wheel. Instead of sending pressure to the cylinders, it's just blowing the pressure right out the hose. These two hoses underneath, they actually look pretty good. I'm fairly positive those have been those have been replaced already. Let's see if we can get those two pulled out. We gotta take this little fella off first. I don't like when they get harder to turn as you're loosening them. That makes you a little suspicious of the outcome. Alright. Two different length bolts. The longer one goes to the block. Well, this one's got a nut down there that we can undo, but this one, the hard line is built into the hose and comes up around. We'll try it real quick, but I may end up going and getting the hammer drill so we can buzz it. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to have to get the right wrench before we try it. I'm going to cheat just a little bit and go ahead and give this a quick, I'm sure I'm on the right one, give it a quick buzz, vibrator up. And then I actually had... Dave from Sassafras Valley Woodworks, he sent me these, I don't know if you want to call them sockets or what, but it's it's a line wrench that goes on to 3 eighths. And I think this is going to save us a whole lot of trouble today. So Dave, if you're watching still, I definitely appreciate it. Oh yeah, easy peasy. That little buzz trick with the hammer drill saves me a lot of trouble. 
These are the dang AC lines that are in your way. In my way. They just need to come off this machine. We're never putting AC back on here. There we go. That one doesn't look near as rusted up as that one was, so we may just try straight with the wrench on that. All right. There she goes. There we go. Stay on there. All right, we'll just drop that on there. There we go. So here's the one that was actually leaking. You can see where she's blown out right there. She's also got some chafing going on there. The hard line's crimped into the hose. We'll just have them make it the same way, probably. And then on this one, this one was not leaking, but the hose isn't the best. And my biggest concern with this one You can see where it's been rubbing on that tie rod end down there. Or steering cylinder, one of the two. So it wouldn't be too much longer and that would wear through that hard line and we'd have a leak there. Since we're in that area, we'll go ahead and replace both of them. So the next step on this, this cylinder underneath. So it leaks pretty bad too. I'm assuming it didn't leak today when we fired it up because all the pressure was going out the bigger hole in that hose. But when that hose was holding, we had a bunch of fluid coming out of this, which is not uncommon. So we got to figure out how to get that thing out of there. I rebuilt one of those is like 600 bucks. I don't want to do that. I think the seals for it are less than 100. So hopefully we can get her apart and uh, just do that. So we're hoping the manual gives us a little bit of insight, probably in the steering section, on how this comes out of here. It's unnecessarily large, but it's the only socket I have that actually is the correct size. Okay, we're gonna break that steering wheel, fellas. We're gonna break that steering wheel. Buzzer loose. Maybe now we can get on her and spin her without tearing the wheel up. I don't know if this is the best way. But she's working, bud. vibration a little pressure oh, oh. probably have to tighten those nuts up better next time all right there we go well that went better than I'd expect And then right behind here, there's a block, and there's a nut. If I take that nut off, I think I can pull that whole linkage out. And I don't think that nut's got to come all the way out. I think you just got to loosen her a bit. Spoiler alert, hammer drill is not the answer. That bolt in that block has to come all the way out because it goes through the shaft. See that dig tent right there? So that bolt's got to come all the way out. You're going to hate it. I want you to know that, okay? You're going to hate every minute of it. I've lost all my tools. Let's do one, two, three, four, and see if that slides all the way off for us. I don't know if there's enough slack in all the wiring or not, but we're fixing to find out. Oh, nice! Let's 
See if she'll slide out. Looks like there's just some wiring harnesses we just have to undo, then we can pull the whole pull the whole panel off. Aside from the oil pressure gauge, I think there's enough slack to just pull the whole thing off. Oh, nice! At some point, this was this was a happening place, man. Got a little alarm clock. I'll keep you up. Oh yeah. While we're sitting here, another thing we're going to have to replace is the proof meter cable or the decometer, whatever you want to call it. It is uh, broken on the other end of the operation. If I pull it up through this way or go that way. There's that proof meter cable. This is the engine side of it, the block side of it. That's supposed to be crimped up on there. They had her taped up, but it's all bent, and I'm going to guess it's probably all rusted in a way that it wouldn't spin free anyway sure doesn't feel like it so we're going to get a new one of those because it's something i want kind of important so we're making progress we should be able to pull this bolt out right here and then this collar comes off if i understand correctly i'm trying to shoot a video bud out it's it's a window no, also a window. Still a window. There you go. Good job, buddy. So, steering motors, securing bolts. That's those one, two, three, four bolts we looked at. And six is the outer tube clamp, which is right there. So that whole tube should pull off once we take that off. There we go. Let's keep this all together. We so said there's two pins. I'm guessing they're behind these retaining clips right there. There's. You see better on this side with the light. Yep, there's a pin. There's a pin. So we gotta pop those clips off. We should be able to slide those pins, pull the column out. I don't know. We can just keep the clip right on the collar. And we won't lose it. Let me get an actual striking tool. All right, so that pin holds on that part of the column and then the other pin just holds on that actual collar itself. I'm going to pop this out of the way right here, this switch. We'll just move that right out of the way. Got all kinds of room. Dang near luxurious. Okay, oh, sorry, sorry. All right, so we got these one, two, three, four lines loose. I believe in theory, we're ready to back these four screws out, and it should come out the bottom side. There she is. So, let me read the book a little bit, but I believe we're gonna be taking these one, two, three, four off, pulling that out, and figuring out what seals are inside of there. 
All right, so here's the steering motor. 34, they're calling that the upper cover assembly, which is gonna be, gonna be this part here. Thirty-seven is a packing seal. Thirty-eight is a backup washer, seal ring, snap ring, dust seal. I'm betting this is where our problem is at. I'm going to take those four bolts off next and see what we get when we get it out of there. I don't know if things have to stay in a certain order here. Sure sounds like there's a lot of parts falling though. Our problem is up in here and the seals in that area there's a little spline section that fits in the bottom of that that's what we heard fall out the shaft pulled out and this piece right here fell out I believe all of my problem is right in this component and now I can't get it back together oh here's instructions on how to take it apart properly should have read that first neat how neat Just drive link, drive gear, whatever they say in the book. It was not getting lined up. That was my problem. I wasn't going back in the way it needed to. Well, there's what the inside of that thing looks like. That's neat. This is going to make a lot of purists really angry. I think we got her. <laughs> I don't know. But I think we do. There is a torque sequence in the book there. We'll follow that. And then we'll actually jump onto what we're supposed to be working on, which I think is the seals in this part. So if you go to take this off, the big tip I got for you, down pressure on this so it doesn't pull all those pump components out. It's that little drive gear down in there that got unaligned and had to take the bottom part to get her back together. Don't lift by that. Just set that there for the time being. Let's dig further in to this. There we go. A little failure there. And we got this little snap ring on the inside. Get my snap ring pliers. Snap rings can fly now. There we go. It shows five components in there, and there is only four. So this could be slightly different. And there's one more down here. This little piece of rubber right here. That guy right there. So now I gotta see if these parts are even still available. Somebody told me they were the other day. They said if you get on Messix, you just gotta look under new Holland parts for the 555. So they had everything. Well, that's not true. They didn't have the O-ring that goes around the bottom. They had to order it, but they can get everything. And it's a little over 80 bucks to get everything on its way here. That includes shipping, which isn't too terrible. It's a heck of a lot cheaper than getting a whole new assembly, which a couple people said, and I priced it. They're right around 600 bucks. So hopefully that fixes everything. And then we'll get those hoses sent off to the local hydraulic shop to get those rebuilt. Now, whenever all these parts come in, I want to be able to hop in this thing and go. And there's several other things that we need to do, including this hydraulic line on the front. This is a radiator hose, which is not good. Radiator, well, some of that's grease, but some of that's the actual rubber coming off. And we'll see what the inside that looks like. But this is rated for coolant, not for hydraulic oil. And that hydraulic oil will eat that up which means it'll get into the pump, which means it'll get into the system, which means it'll clog the screens, the filters, and it's just not great. We're also gonna try to get both doors off without breaking them. And we might even do a little, and I mean a little, priming on some metal for when everything goes back together. First time, first couple times I've drained this, I was like, man, that's kind of a pain in the butt, but actually, there's a hole right there, and it just goes right out that hole to the bucket down below. 
So, not terrible. They'll tighten her back up again, huh, bud? Never can be too sure. Yeah, it just goes, it goes straight down that hole and straight into the bucket. I mean, it, well, they designed it that way. Fluid doesn't look bad. Already dumped the bucket a couple times, so while that finish is draining, I'm gonna take this bracket off. That's what the AC mounted to, and I'm just gonna get it out of the way. Now, how you gonna fit on one and not fit on the other, huh? Now she fits. Feels like one more down on the front. There we go. And we do have to put that one back in as well. Now, as long as it doesn't bottom out, should be okay. And if it does bottom out, we'll just add a washer to the thickness of that plate. Oh yeah, we're fine. No worries there. And this exhaust support, we're actually just gonna go ahead and take this off and uh, clean it up and modify it a little bit. It only needs to be this tall right here. So I'm going to cut that and clip that corner. Just get this nasty excess off there. Then we'll flap wheel our edges a little bit. Wire wheel it, degrease it, and throw some paint on it. Using my Benchmarks abrasives. Love these things. This isn't like a full restoration, right? We're not getting crazy with it. We're just, I want to be able to reach in there and work on the engine and grab stuff or rub up against stuff and nothing reach out and grab me, you know? Some days I'm okay at welding, some days I'm bad. Luckily I got plenty of welding rods hanging around. Stand still. Looks like we're empty here. Go ahead and run that back in. There is supposed to be, I don't know if you see these four holes, there's supposed to be a piece that comes out and a piece of hard tube that comes up and just a short section of hose right here. Basically enough to be like a vibration buffer between the pump and everything else so it's not all tied together with rigid hard lines. But I think that's well over $200 for that part. Looks like at some point it went bad and they just rigged this up. So I think we got it in time as far as any damage goes. It's definitely softened up in there, but it has not, has not begun breaking the rubber down yet, which is good. That means hopefully we didn't get a bunch of contaminants in the pump. These springs are on the inside of suction hoses that keeps them from collapsing. So what we ended up with, this is actually fuel filler hose which will stand up to the hydraulic oil fine, just like it would the diesel oil or uh, any kind of gasoline. And it's got the spiral wire inside of it. And then inside is smooth and is the correct diameter. And then for the clamps, instead of going with the regular style hose clamp I went with what are called t-bar style clamps they hold a little bit more even pressure and you can tighten them down quite a bit more too this you know this is like a nice clamp we'll rate it at a 6 out of 10 this is like a 10 out of 10 these are really nice clamps and one thing I've been trying to do is as I replace things on this machine if it stands room for an upgrade I'm trying to upgrade it Get on there. okay all right. Yeah. There we go. Get up there. Get up there. There we go. Woo. Oh, that's a much better fit, too. Looks good. It's kind of got everything shoved tight. Nice.
nice thing about these T-bar style clamps, you can really get down on them. A few people have asked if I have the grill. I do. She's pretty beat up, but I do have it. So I'll make sure. Yep. That is the grill for the tractor. Okay. I'm not going to put the grill on until we get that filled with fluid, and I know that's going to work okay, and she's not going to leak on us. But I do want to go ahead and clean her up a little bit, get some primer on her. If the primer dries, we're actually we're going to paint the grill black. Why? Because because well, I want to. Are we going to take the time to beat this thing out and make her straight and pretty? No. That flap wheel just does a good job of scuffing up the paint. It takes off if there's any excess scaling or things like that. Again, we're not doing, this isn't like a full-on restoration or anything like that. That's not what we're doing here. Just trying to make it, you know, look decent at 100 yards. This is what I had laying around, so this will be the third coat of this on that little exhaust bracket. It's not that it needs the high heat, but the exhaust stuff is the same same paint, so at least the whole system will kind of match. The bracket might stick out like a sore thumb. That's okay. And I got the second coat of primer on both of those. Both of those, both sides. And we're gonna touch something up in there real quick. But where this bracket bolts in, I just want to clean this up and hit this with a little bit as well. Just so it's not too bad behind there. And I'm literally, I'm just doing a coat of primer because we will at some point pull the exhaust off and pull some things out of the way and paint the block. I got some blue engine enamel to paint everything. But right now, just a little primer on the back side to just kind of help keep the rust down. Considering she's already kind of got the hammered patina and I got this laying around We're just gonna use some hammered finish. I mean, I don't know. It'll be fancy the fanciest grill. I got laying around We'll see how it goes Is there any paint in there? There it is Oh, oh that's gonna be something that's gonna be something Stop. <laughs> All right, wind's blowing this way. It actually doesn't look too bad. I'm not the best with a rattle can, so I try to keep my coats pretty light. Oh dear, look, see that run there? That's from the primer. A little bit of athletic primer on us. That's okay though. We'll just flip that to the inside. While that's a drying, let's see about popping these doors off. Pretty nervous about these things coming off here in one piece. I'm really hoping we don't break this glass. So I don't see any kind of keeper in these. It looks like just a, a barrel and a pin slides in. We'll pry up. I just want to see if it's got a little. Oh, she's pretty tight on there. So I see if I can even get them to slide first. You know. I mean, it's not like the pin seized. If the door turns, the pin turns, so. I think I'm just gonna get the tractor with the forks and I mean, this fancy platform here. It's not the most stable thing I've been on, but it's also not the least stable. Just giving her some wiggles and standing on that pry bar bought me a little bit. But I don't really have much of a plan for when it comes off, so I'm gonna lower, get this underneath, and then make it up as I go. Ah, there's no plan quite like no plan. You know what I mean? Oh, that's wobbly. Now, if you guys can just grab that from the ground for me, it'd be, be great. 
Just, yep, just grab it. Yeah, you just take it from me there. Perfect. Thank you. Yep, no, nope, you're doing great. You're doing good. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. That's about how I saw it go. Oh, bad. oh good. Oh, she's heavy, bud. Oh, she's heavy. It actually looks kind of cool. So you can see why these have to come off because whenever I start doing these cab repairs I need these out of the way and like I said they themselves need repaired as well Let's see if we can get this open <laughs> some days I feel like I'm just too optimistic about things okay Let's see if we can Embarrassing me. All right. It doesn't have a lot of structure on the bottom anymore. I'm a little worried that when I swing this out, it's just gonna, you know, kind of disappear on us. Oh. See what happens, huh? It stayed put. Oh, yeah. Can't get the tractor around on this side, but hopefully we can just handle it, I guess. Uh, Probably be easiest when I start doing these cab repairs to honestly just cut cut this whole thing out and replace it versus patching it all in. So I'm gonna have to get that glass out at some point too. But that's that's good. And you can see most of the door all the way up around the top. All of this, this is all in really good shape. It's just this piece down here at the bottom, and I bet. I could either rig something up or I could get my local machine shop to uh, bend me a piece to put on that. Overall, the door's in pretty decent shape, though. Got the third coat on that. It actually looks pretty good. Once we get that all squared away and topped off with the hydraulic fluid, we'll get that slapped back on there. An afternoon later, I kind of want everything to dry out. I did have to put the, I did have to pick up some shorter bolts since that bracket's not there anymore. There we go. And putting a lock washer on there. Turned out pretty good for what it is. I'm definitely happier with this bracket. I'm not gonna snag myself or hurt myself or what have you working in there. And it just looks a whole heck of a lot cleaner. Pretty happy with it. Pretty happy with the way the grill turned out. I mean, look at the shine on her, would you? Look at the, looks like a daggone bass boat, bud. We could take this rig fishing at least, at least once. Stay tuned to see what we do next on this 555. We got some other stuff coming. We've been working on stuff coming down the pipe for the channel. It's going to be pretty awesome. I'm pretty excited about it. I'm pretty excited you're here. And I hope you're excited enough to subscribe and stay tuned and come visit us on the next one. I don't know. I just make these outros up every time. But I think they're working okay. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on, on the next one. No, that, that one was awkward. <laughs>